Man's search for fulfillment is beyond ordinary human efforts. At Triumphant Church International, the eyes of your understanding become open to the link between your dreams, earthly realities, and achievements. Our mission is to restore you to your full potential in Christ and inculcate a lifestyle of prayer, outreach, and intimate relationship with God. Triumphant Church International has her headquarters at Tottenham in London, with branches in England and Africa. At Triumphant Church International, you experience God's anointing, strong pastoral care, revelatory biblical teachings, unconditional love from the pastoral team and all members. Senior pastors Clem and Marjorie Asomawe, trustees, ministerial team, leaders, workers, and entire membership welcome you to Triumphant Church International. We are excited about your fellowship, which is a tremendous blessing to us. And we know you shall definitely be blessed and fired up as you fellowship with us at Triumphant Church International. Your breakthrough is our joy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord God Jehovah. This is the day that the Lord has made, another new day, first day of the week, Sunday the 19th of April 2020. I will begin our live broad broadcast through YouTube and Facebook today. We're going to continue with the website uh, uh, live stream when we get back to church because of the heavy load we're using um, home broadband so it's not able to carry the three um, so for today is just YouTube and Facebook um, today is a very 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 special service and I'm just um, excited because it's an anointing service so I believe you got your oils already so Pastor Marjorie is going to preach the word, and after the word is preached, I will administer the uh, uh, anointing. Um, we're going to have praise and worship from uh, Shouts of Joy, and uh, we're going to have our hymn today. Um, and... Uh, just uh, gather your family right now so we can begin the service with hymns. May the name of the Lord be glorified today. Father, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you adoration. We thank you for we know you're going to do something great, something powerful today. Mighty Father, let the word of God come with with, with, with power, with inspiration, with unction, so that whoever listens, whoever hears these words, Father, we have a divine impact, and the anointing will be transferred, will be sent from this very place to everyone, wherever we are listening, all over the world. Jehovah God, we exalt you today. Thank you, whatever is happening concerning COVID-19, coronavirus, infectious disease. We know you are in control. You are God of heaven and earth. Father, you are the one who created the earth that it should not be moved. Father, God, you made us. You said the earth is yours and the fullness thereof, the people and they that dwell therein. You cannot create the earth and you cannot create us in vain. Therefore, we thank you because there is going to be restoration of the circumstances. Lord, we ask for mercy all over the world. Mercy where we have offended you. We ask for mercy, Father. Temper judgment with mercy. And we claim the blood of Jesus Christ, Father, over the sins of the world from Africa to Europe, Father God, to 
uh, United States of America, North America, Canada, to South America, Brazil, Argentina, Chile, Father God, to uh, Asia, Lord, in Russia, India, Pakistan, to Afghanistan, Kajastan, Kujibestan, Uzbekistan, Mongolia, Tibet, Bhutan, Georgia, mighty God, to Australia, Father God, to New Zealand, to the islands of the seas. Let your name alone be lifted up. We claim the blood of Jesus. Father, we challenge coronavirus with the blood of Jesus. With the blood of Jesus. We seal this week with the blood. Let infections reduce. Father, let the death rate begin to reduce to zero. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.
is patient You feel my heart With so much peace and joy shall we pray eternal rock of ages we thank you mighty god king of kings alpha and omega we bless your name blessed be your holy name oh god thank you for your loving kindness thank you for your faithfulness 
Be thou exalted. Lord, we just submit this service to you. Have your way, King of Kings. Glorify your name, O God. In Jesus' name, we've prayed and believed. Amen and amen and amen. Wow, what a day to be alive. What a day to be alive and what a day to be a Christian. We are living in exciting hours. We're living in exciting days and I am so excited to come to you this morning and I want to thank God Almighty for giving me this opportunity. I want, I want to also thank my husband, Pastor Clem, for giving me this privilege to minister to the people of God. Honey, I appreciate you so much. Thank you. May your labor of love in the house of God continue to yield increase in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. And I want to say a glorious thank you to every one of you that keeps coming and coming every, you know, for all our services. I hope you are enjoying the quarantine and uh, you're not getting too bored. At some point, you perhaps have to tell us how you're dealing with this. Amen. So that others can learn from your story. But just keep your joy. Make sure that you keep your joy. Amen. I'm going to go right into the word of God. Amen. I want to continue with my message, which I preached on the 8th of April, you know, where we talked about the grace for now and after COVID. Amen. Because there is life after COVID. Life does not end here. Amen. There's life after COVID. Praise God. So I want to look at, you know, there are several quarantines in the Bible. But today I want to try and look at about three of them. Amen. If I can, I'll look at the fourth one. Amen. Otherwise, the next time I come, we're going to talk about the fourth one. But there were some quarantines in the scriptures. Amen. Wow. I want us to go very quickly to um, Genesis chapter 6. Thank you, Lord. Genesis chapter 6, and we're going to read verse chapter, Genesis chapter 6. Let's take from verse, I'll take it from verse 6. Amen. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 6. I hope you have your Bible and you have your anointing oil. Prepare your anointing oil, put it in a bowl. If you don't have olive oil, any other oil you have is fine. Pastor Clem is going to come and he will minister the anointing. Amen. The anointing destroys the yoke. Destroys the yoke. Praise God. So yeah, we're in Genesis chapter 9 and we shall read from verse 6. Praise God. And so the Bible says the Lord was very sorry he had ever made man on the face of the earth. It broke his heart and the Lord said in verse 7, I will wipe this human race I have created from the face of the earth. Yes, I will destroy every living thing, all the people, the large animals, the small animals that scurry along the ground, and even the beds of the sky. I am sorry that I ever made them. Verse 8. I want you to take note of verse 8. But Noah found favor before the Lord. Amen. Noah found favor before the Lord. And so I declare that you and your family, you will find favor before God Almighty. In this season, your family and your loved ones, your friends, are not only your loved ones, even the entire world were praying that we will find favor before God. Verse 9, this is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, the only blameless man. Please take notice. This man had favor before God. I want you to take notice. Noah had favor before God and the Bible says he was the only blameless man living on the earth at that time. Can I just digress for one minute? Because when, when we say certain things or read certain things in the Bible, you want to quickly clear it. When you hear that Noah was the only blameless man, don't forget that at that time, Jesus had not died. And even now that Jesus has died, it is his righteousness that we put on. So what did the Bible mean when they said that Noah was the only righteous man, the only blameless man on the face of the earth? I don't want to distract you, but I want to take you quickly, very quickly to the story where the Bible says that the reason why God was angry with the earth 
was not just because of the sin. The Bible says man or the earth had been corrupted. So what corrupted the earth? I want you to have that understanding first of all before I move on because once you see something, you quickly have to address it. Why was the earth corrupted? The Bible tells us that the angels that had fallen from their state, that is the demons, the spirits that were cast out with the devil, amen, came and they began to sleep with the daughters of men. They began to sleep with human beings. And the Bible says, as a result of that, all the generations were corrupted. So my understanding is that Noah's family was the only family that their lineage had not been corrupted by the spirits that are coming into the earth and started sleeping with the daughters of men. So right now I speak into your family. I don't know why I have to explain this, but I believe there's somebody that you are dealing with generational curses. You're dealing with issues that have come to mutate your family DNA, either through sickness or either through iniquity. But right now I come with the precious blood of Jesus and I pray a purification into your bloodline, Marahutisia. I pray a, a, a cleansing into your bloodline in the name of Jesus. Receive it and say amen right there. Amen. Don't forget to share this message so that your friends can be blessed as well. Let me move on quickly because that was just on the side. Amen. So the Bible says Noah was blameless. The only blameless man living on the earth and he walked in close fellowship with God. Number one, he had favor. Number two, he was the only blameless man on earth. And number three, he was walking with God in close fellowship. I'm taking you somewhere. So mark all these points that I'm giving. Noah was the father of three sons and Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now, verse 11 says, God saw that the earth had become corrupt. Remember what I explained, how the earth became corrupt, amen, and was filled with violence. God observed all this corruption in the world, and everyone on the earth was corrupt. So God said, I will destroy. Cut the long story short, long to run to verse 14. And God said to Noah, build a large boat, from cypress, cypress wood, and waterproof it with tar inside and out, and construct decks and stalls throughout its interior, and all that and all that. And God said, okay, take a pair, two, two of everything. You know the story better than I do. Amen. So they went into quarantine. <laughs> Praise God. Bible says, verse 22 of Genesis 6, Noah did everything exactly as God has commanded him. Noah was a, a wonderful man. He did exactly as God commanded him. I'm taking you somewhere. Praise God. Now, run with me to Genesis chapter 9. Wow. I'm excited, you know. Amen. We're going to look at these quarantines in the Bible. And we're going to see how the people came out. Did they come out better or did they come out better? How did they come out? Because it's important that, oh, don't let me just run ahead of myself. Let's read the Bible. Are you following? Amen. Genesis chapter 9 and verse, verse 20. Thank you, Lord. Genesis chapter 9, verse 20. After the flood, Noah began to cultivate the ground. And he planted a vineyard. So, the, the flood was, God told them that the flood will last for 40 days. But when you read the book of Genesis critically, you find out that the flood lasted indeed for 40 days, but they were in the ark for longer than 40 days. They were in the ark for almost one year. Noah had to wait until everything was dried up. Before he came up, before God. Actually, it wasn't even no. God locked the door. You know, it was God who locked the door. Read your Bible. God locked the door and they could not come out until God opened it. And when did God open it? God opened it when everywhere was dry. And when it was safe for them to come out. That's a teaching for another time. Amen. But when they came out, the Bible says in verse 20 that, Noah immediately began to cultivate the ground. He was ready. He began to cultivate the ground. And the Bible says he even planted a vineyard. But verse 21 tell, tells us that one day 
after he had started planting and after he was recovering from the quarantine of the ark, the Bible says one day he drank some wine which he made, perhaps from his vineyard. Oh, sadly, he became drunk and then he lay naked inside his tent until one of his sons came and saw him. And went to tell the other children, ah, go and see our dad. He's so drunk that he's naked. Now, immediately after that quarantine of, uh, quarantine of the ark, Noah survived the ark. This was, uh, Noah survived the quarantine. This was a quarantine that, unlike COVID-19, it killed the whole world. It was a pandemic, in quote, in the sense that it was global. Everything that was living, this was including animals, died. Praise God. But Noah and his family survived it based on the reason that I've given to us. Amen. Now, immediately um, Noah came out, he started a celebration galore. He was happy. Praise God. He started celebrating and the Bible says he actually began to walk immediately. He began to walk and to the extent that he even planted a vineyard. Praise God. Glory to Jesus. Amen. So now, what I want to tell you is that we are, we're going to come out of this. There's no doubt about it. We will come out of this by the grace of God. Amen. But begin to prepare your heart, my beloved, for after COVID. Prepare your heart for sober celebration. Amen. For sober celebration. Amen. Not just like Noah. Noah immediately he came out. He began to plant. God helped him. He built a vineyard. And the next thing we saw, he began to drink out of that vineyard. And the Bible says he began to, um, he, he began to drink out of that vineyard. And the Bible says he immediately got drunk. Terrible drunkenness. May God not allow us to come out of COVID-19 recklessly. Why don't you lift up your hand and say, I will come out of COVID-19 without recklessness. I will come out with a sober mind. I will come out reflecting properly and rejoicing and celebrating with soberness. If there's a word like that. Or soberly. Praise God. Amen. So begin to, as you assess this situation of COVID-19, stay with me to the end. I'm going to tell you some strong things. Amen. Come out of it with sober reflection. Amen? Because why sober reflection? A lot of people around us have died, and I'm going to get into that. You may not know them by name, but the 20,000, the 23,000 in Spain, the 15,000 in UK, as at yesterday, reflect somebody's mother, somebody's father, a colleague, somebody, somebody's colleague at work, somebody's parent, somebody's spouse, somebody's friend. And the list goes on. Immediately this happened, Noah came out. Noah came out of isolation. Praise God. He's been with his family alone for a long time. And the Bible says when he came out, I can, I can kind of think, I can say this, that he was not ready emotionally for the next phase that came. He was excited immediately he went into work. Just like some of us already, I can see quite a lot of people are already, and it's good to work. Do your daily stuff. Amen. One of the things God told me is, in this season, I'm not doing anything new per se. Because why am I saying that? You need to be able to take in what is happening around us. A lot of us are not taking it in. Oh, don't let me jump the goal. Amen. Because there's a huge shift in the world. There's a huge shift on the earth. Life will not be the same when we come out. Business will not immediately go back to the same. Church will not immediately go back to the same. School will not immediately go back to the same. Life has kind of changed before us. And a wise man, a wise woman will sit back and reflect about life reflect about everything that is happening around us. Amen? Basically, like some people have been saying around us, people are saying the earth is kind of going through a reset. And so you, when, when the earth is going through this reset, we need to come out soberly. Praise God. We need to look inwardly. Praise God. 
Amen. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 9 verse 24. The Bible says Noah woke up from his stupor. When Noah woke up from his stupor, that's when you say stupor, that's stupidity basically. Amen. Terrible state. Thank God he woke up from it. But I want you right now, this season of, uh, of quarantine, begin to look inwards at your weaknesses. Perceived weaknesses, covert weakness, weaknesses, overt weaknesses of your life. Because Noah, in the season when they were in that uh, stupor, remember what I explained, because you'll be wondering, Noah is said to be perfect. How come he, he was said to be the only blameless man, the only righteous man? How come he came out and is drinking? That really explains the fact that when the Bible says he was a blameless man, it was actually talking about the corruption of the angels that came to corrupt the people on earth. So it was not a thing of his own activities, etc. So we can see that here actually playing out. Amen. Noah did not, I believe, did not take time to assess his weaknesses. This is a season for us to seek the face of God. Deal with your inner <coughs> secret weaknesses. Amen. Because there will be life after this. Praise God. And that weakness that we don't deal with, sometimes it grows. And it will come out in a time when you are celebrated. That's why I said so celebrate soberly. Remember that Noah came out of that ark after 350 days or so. Not 40 days. The ark, you see when we listen to God, when God speaks we must listen to him. The reason why many times we carry a grudge or pain against God is because sometimes we don't really listen. Somebody could have gone out and said, Lord, but you said 40 days. God said the flood will fall. It will rain for 40 days. But he didn't say how long it will take for you to come out of the ark. That's a teaching for another day. Praise God. So Noah came out without dealing with his inner weaknesses. And we're going to talk about a lot more about Noah. But let me run to another quarantine. Maybe not a quarantine, but another incident that affected a whole city that led to a quarantine. Initially, it wasn't a quarantine, but it led to one. Praise God. The story of Lot. When you go to Genesis chapter 19, because of time, I can't read it all. I can't really read it. But when you go to Genesis 19, we are told of the story of Lot. Again, the Bible tells us that Lord was righteous. He was with Abraham. Amen. But when the crisis happened, you and I know the story, Lord had to be taken to uh, Sodom and Gomorrah where he chose. And he lived in Sodom and Gomorrah and he raised a family in Sodom and Gomorrah. But a time came when the angels of God came into the land because of the report that they had heard about the corruption <laughs> In that land. Amen. You know the story better. <coughs> and then. Lord was told to come out. Because the angels needed to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And Lord took his wife. Took his daughters. The wife. The husbands of his daughters. Didn't want to leave. So they left them there. You see as you come out. Of all this. There are certain things that just have to shift. This is a time to reflect on relationships. i keep that for another day. Now, Lord has gone through some terrible things in just a few days. Just like Noah. Can you imagine Noah? <coughs> Everybody that he knew on earth, his neighbors, his friends, his business partners, he came out after 350 days. And they were not all there. Not even one of them. Except his family. That was traumatic. Same thing is happening to Lot here. Lot lost all his friends. In just one day. The whole city was destroyed. His business was destroyed. Everything around him was destroyed. What he knew in Sodom and Gomorrah. Everything was destroyed. And then add to it. His wife died. 
that's a different story. And so I want to take a minute for you to just ponder on this. Just like we are going through the same thing. A lot of times when we go through intense activity, excuse me. When we go through a, 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 a intense situation, a lot of us kind of just shut it down. We just act like it's not there. Beloved, this is real. We are dealing with something serious. We're dealing with something that has changed our lifestyles. I woke up this morning and I said to Pastor Clem, I said, honey, this was about 9 a.m. I said, oh, by now I'm supposed to have been in church. Life changed within just a few weeks. And some of us are not sitting down to take it in. When I say take it in, I'm not saying dwell on it. But a wise man must reflect on the activities around them. The Bible says if you are spiritual, you must do what? Judge all things. What does it mean to judge? Analyze all things. Assess all things. Look at the situation around you and think, you know, just think about it. Reflect on life. Reflect on the things that are happening around us. The things that have changed around you. Don't just shut it down. You, if, if you don't know how to do that, just call someone. Have a conversation with somebody. If you need somebody to converse with, call the church line. I will converse with you. We, we, we need somebody to just talk about this. Open up about the way you are feeling about this thing. And don't just hide it. Amen. This was intense. In one day, and then as it came out, the Bible says, the angel said, Okay, Lord. You're going to go into a, you're going to go to a mountain. We're going to take you to those mountains. And Lord said, no, 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 no. I'm not ready to go to the mountain. There's a little village here, a small village. Let me go there. And the angel said, okay, that's fine. Go to that village. The village is called Zoa. But when it got to Zoa, the Bible says, Lord said, I can't stay here. I am afraid of the people. Perhaps he saw the same kind of thing that happened in Sodom. And he said, I'm afraid of the people. Now, fear is something that you, you just have to deal with. The Bible tells us that God has not given you and I the spirit of fear. But I thank God that when he took out the spirit of fear, there was no vacuum. As soon as the spirit of fear was taken out, God filled him with a spirit of power. Somebody say, I've got power. Power over the activities of the earth. Yes, you do. God didn't just leave a vacuum. He gave you power. He gave you love. And they gave you sound mind. A sound mind is a mind. And I love the way I think about this. A sound mind is a mind that is like the mind of Christ. What's the mind of Christ? To me, in my simplicity, and you know me, I like to keep things a bit simple. In my simplicity, I'm thinking the mind of Christ is that mind that is able to comprehend. One person is saying, I need rain, Lord. The other person next to them is saying, I prefer song. And he's able to juggle around it and just make everyone happy. That's the mind of Christ. Lift up your hand and say, my mind is sound. I'm not going to be overwhelmed by this. Amen and amen. Shout it, I'm not going to be overwhelmed by this. I have a sound mind in the name of Jesus. So fear, fear, what was, what was he afraid of? He was afraid of the new structures that he saw when he came out. He was afraid of the things happening. He said, I'm just afraid. And where did he choose to go? He said, let me go to the mountain cave. Please, let's read 2 Peter chapter 2 very quickly. 2 Peter chapter 2. Where if you're just joining, I want you to just, we're looking at the, some, some current things in the Bible. And please stay with me to the end. I'm going to show you the way that you're going to come out of this quarantine and you're going to come out better. You will come out a better person. Praise God. 2 Peter chapter 2. Praise the Lord. If you're being blessed, please share this with somebody on your wall or on your WhatsApp group. Make sure that somebody gets this. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Second Peter chapter 2. And let's read from verse 4. We hear a little bit about, uh, about uh, Lot. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 7 says, let me take it from verse 7. But God also rescued Lot out of Sodom because he was a righteous man who was sick 
of the immorality of the wicked people around him. Yes, Lot was a righteous man who was tormented in his soul by the wickedness he saw and the wickedness he heard day after day. Mm. Another man here we're hearing, righteous man. Praise God. A man who feared God. And the Bible says, please write down I think we should read it. We shouldn't just write it up. Let's go to Genesis 19, verse 30. Genesis 19 and verse 30. I'm giving us a lot of scriptures, but that's fine. Genesis 19. Let's run to verse 30. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to the King of Kings. Oh, it's so warm in here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, King of Glory. Genesis chapter 19. Amen. Genesis 19, we'll look at it from verse 30. It says, Afterward, Lord left Zohar because he was afraid of the people there. And he went to live in a cave in the mountains with his two daughters. One day, the older daughter said to her sister, there are no men left anywhere in this entire area, so we can't get married like everyone else. And our father will soon be too old to have children. Come, let's get him drunk with wine, and then we will have sex with him. That way, we will preserve our family, our family line through our father. So that night, they got him drunk with wine, and the older daughter went in and slept with him, he was unaware of her lying down or getting up again. The things that happen in the Bible, man. For those of you who like to watch movies, there is plenty of movies in the Bible. <laughs> Praise God. The next morning, the older daughter said to her younger sister, I've had sex with our father last night. Let's get him drunk with wine again tonight. And you go in and have sex with him. That way we will preserve our family line through our father. Verse 35, Genesis chapter 19. So that night, they got him drunk with wine again. And the younger daughter went in and had intercourse with him. And again, as before, he was unaware of her lying down or getting up again. As a result, both of Lot's daughters became pregnant by their own father. Blood of Jesus. These are two righteous men. Noah and Lot. But they came out of parenting completely different. And the enemy opposed, I mean just altered their families. You will come out of this quarantine better. Your family will come out better because you will handle it better. Can I hear a loud amen where you are? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Now, Lord said, I don't want to stay in that little village anymore that he first asked for. Because of the confusion and you can't blame him. Can you imagine what has happened in just a few days? And the Bible says, he said, let's go to the mountain cave. And they went to the mountain cave. And then there, in that quarantine where there was nobody, the girls even said, that, no man here. They were all living alone. They could not cope with life after, after COVID-19. And they decided in their mind to stay in isolation. Like, ah, I can't touch anybody. I can't touch this. I can't go to work. I can't. No, no, no. You will not live with fear. After all this is over, you will walk around in faith. Can I hear an amen? In boldness. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. They were afraid. And so they went, they put themselves, this one, nobody put them, they put themselves in this quarantine out of fear. My beloved, this is a time to take all this in. Look at Lord. He came out and look at what happened. They became, his daughters got to the extent, in fact, he got drunk. Now the daughters gave him something to drink. I don't know if they spiked the drink. We don't know. But if you give me drink today, of course, drinking is not my own sin. So I don't drink. So if you give me drink, I'm not going to drink it. So somewhere along the line, this girl here standing in front of you believes that Noah used to have this little weakness of drinking. 
And Lot used to have this little weakness of drinking. And in their very vulnerable time, that thing came up. I want you to pray and break every weakness that you have in this season. It will not erupt in your time of glory. Can I hear an amen? So this is the time. Like I said earlier on, God told me, don't rush. Just, you know, sit still. Observe what is happening. Take it in. Don't rush. This is the time to take it all in. This is the time to grieve. This is the time to ask all the questions. This is the time to reflect on life. This is not the time to overwork your mind. <laughs> and can I add, this is the time to take the needed rest. It's the time to rest your brain. We've all been working for years and then we have this opportunity. And then some of us are jumping here and there. You know, I, I want to do this. I want to do that. Somebody gave me a research that she did. And one of the things that she, 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 she showed to me is that a there's a charity that is doing so well in this season. Doing so well. It's not a church. It's a charity. I mean, they are kind of set. It was like they were ready for the world. For, for the whole thing. And when they asked him, the, the chief executive, how come you are surviving, you know, in every area as a charity? He said, most of what we are doing now, we put in place four years ago, nine months ago. They didn't just wake up and began to do fire brigade uh, planning. And sometime very soon, not now, when it's all a bit settled in my head, when I've taken it all in, I'm going to come and talk about planning, strategic planning. Praise God. Because we need it. Of course, that will not be on the church platform. That will be on another platform. Praise God. Get yourself ready. Because we, we, we need some, some strategies to survive and to cope and to overcome and to thrive after COVID-19. Praise God. This is a man that had this man had two, so many things happened to him, Lord. He saw visitation of angels. That's not what everybody hap it happens to everybody every day. In just one day, he's rejoicing. Angels have shown up. The next thing, destruction of city. The next thing, death of many people. The next thing, his wife. The next thing, business, sources of income. Everything gone. And if you don't walk in this carefully, with all that is happening, you may say, well, I don't know anybody that has died. But every time you go to social media, you see my auntie, my uncle, my friend. It's all hitting at us. Hitting at us. And sometimes, let me let you know that grieving is not only about death. No, we, we don't only grieve when people die. Grieving comes when you lose anything that is valuable. Praise God. And so this is not the time for impulsive decisions panic strategies is a time for you to enjoy the presence of your close family these girls in genesis chapter 19 <coughs> lost daughters they said all the men around us are dead why because they were only looking at you know just the current situation how can they say all the men are dead when there were villages around and they could have just said, Dad, we need you to go with us. Let's go and see what is happening. Listen, in this season, you must deal with everything that is limiting your mind. This is the time to deal with it. So that when you come out of this, you're coming out. Ha, a reinvention. Let me put it that way. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, glory. A reinvention in every area, in your family, in your career. Not just the panic. Oh, I need to look for a job. Oh, I need to do that. No. Oh my God. They said, no man anywhere. Who told you? Amen. And so you don't judge your present situation by where you're coming from. Don't judge the present and the future in a panic based on your past pain. That's what these girls did. And that's what made them to get their father drunk. Praise God. There were opportunities available for marriage in nearby cities. But let me tell you something that happened. The quarantine, the physical quarantine, quarantined their mind. Put your hand on your head and say, in the name 
of Jesus. I'm coming out of this with a sound mind. My mind is not quarantined. My joy is not quarantined. My anointing is not quarantined. My space is not quarantined. Somebody shout glory. Amen. Noah and Lot and their families were grieving deeper than their eyes could see. Amen. They were grieving, grieving deeper, but they didn't sit down and reflect on it. They were grieving the world like they used to know it. They were grieving for all the bad news that they had heard. Like today, we're hearing everything. It's coming at us from the news. You need to be able to sit back and flush this thing out of your system. So much has been put into us in terms of bad news. And let me tell you, that can cause trauma. Like I said, people don't just grieve about death. We grieve about the life we used to live. We grieve about the, in quotes, the good old days. We grieve about our jobs. Amen. So my, my admonition to you is, please don't build an anchor there. Don't build an anchor in the old things that have happened. You must enlarge your mind. Don't keep your eyes on this current situation alone. Oh my God. I'll try and quickly talk about the third quarantine. And then we're going to pray. I don't think I can get to the fourth, but I'll try very quickly if I can. Revelation chapter 1. The Bible tells us, please read from Revelation chapter 1 from verse 1. But I'm going to read verses 9 to 12. There was a man who was on quarantine. Apostle John, the revelator. Apostle John was placed on exile. And himself alone was on the island of Patmos. He could have stayed there and said, oh my God, my life is gone. That was quarantine. He could have stayed there and judged God. He could have stayed there and said, God, you don't love us. He could have said, God, why is this happening to me? I was only serving you. But the Bible says, Apostle John had an encounter with God in that place. May you not lose your encounter with the Lord in this season. This is a season for you to go into the word of God. It's a season for us to tune our ears, hear God, and know what God is saying in this season. Because God is speaking. Can I hear an amen? Let me quickly read verses 9 to 12. I, John, am your brother and your partner in suffering and in God's kingdom. Okay, let me take it from verse 1. Okay, I'll just read there. But when you read from verse 1, at the time it says, God, Apostle John, saw the heavens open. And God said, Apostle John, come up higher. Beloved, I speak the same to you. Come up higher. Come up from that depression in the name of Jesus. God said, come up. I want to show you some things. And what did God show him? God said, when you come up higher... I will show you the things that have passed. Some of you will dream dreams. If your mind is settled, you will dream dreams. You will have visions. You will have revelations. Somebody say amen there. Amen. amen. Loud amen. Praise God. Say, I will show you the things that have passed. Some things that you've been struggling with. This time of reset. Use the opportunity. Say, some things that have happened in the past, I will show to you. He said, uh, John, I will show you the things that are happening now and I will show you the things that are going to come in the future. Most of what we're reading now about the end times came from that time of quarantine. Apostle John was just enjoying the presence of God. I will show you the things that have passed. I will show you the things that are happening now. I will explain them to you and I will explain the things that will come in the future. Oh, why don't you lift up your hands and receive this encounter with the Spirit of God. And when you read from verse 9, chapter 1, it says, I, John, am your brother. In other words, I'm like you. So if I had an encounter with the Holy Ghost in my quarantine, John is saying, I'm your brother. You will also have a, a, an encounter with the Lord. Shout it out, amen. I, John, am your brother. I'm your partner in suffering and in God's kingdom and in the patient endurance to which God calls us. I was exiled to the island of Patmos for preaching the word of God and for my testimony about Jesus. It was the Lord's day and I was worshiping in the spirit. He spent time worshiping the Lord in the spirit. 
as I was worshiping in the spirit, he says, suddenly I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet blast. And it said, write it in a book, everything you see. There's a time for many of you to write your books. To look at the things that God has been saying to you for years. To put the structure. And to just, you know, hear God in this season. So, <laughs> John had an encounter with God, number one. John had revelations of things that were, of things that are, and of things that are to come. John was able to pass these things down through writing in a book, putting it down in a book. He could have chosen to say, in my quarantine, I'm just going to curse God. I'm going to backslide. I'm going to use the time to watch movies. Only movies. Yes, watch movies. You need to relax your mind. Praise God. You do need to relax your mind. Do something that you like. But also make sure that you are not just living in limbo. Praise God. Noah came out a drunken man. Noah that the Bible says was blameless. Why? Because of the way they handled their quarantine. Lord, who the Bible says was a righteous man, came out of quarantine looking like, look at what happened to his family. It won't happen to you. But look at Apostle John. Let me quickly just take this last one. Oh God, I hope I remember it. I just want to add this one quickly. I think it's in 1 Corinthians. Holy Ghost. Hmm. 1 Corinthians. Oh, hang on, I'll find it now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I think it's 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Holy Ghost. Let me find it. Amen. Uh, my Bible is here. Pastor will help me to get it. It just came to my spirit. When the children, well, of course, Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 2, but I'm looking for the bit in 1 Corinthians, I think it is 15. Verse 6, let me just check. Please give me time. It just came, came into my spirit. So I want to, 15? Verse 6, I think it is. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes, I got it. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 6 says, After that, Jesus was seen by more than 500 of his followers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. How did we get about this? Praise God. If you go to Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 2, you remember the story of Pentecost? The Lord said to them, every one of you, stay in the upper room. That was quarantine. Quarantine for prayer. Don't let anyone tell you that you're praying too much in this season. Jesus himself quarantined them. He said something big is about to happen. Something glorious is about to happen. I'm about to pour out my spirit. Stay in that quarantine for 50 solid days. When they started from this verse, there were 500. But you and I know the story. Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 2. By the time they finished, there were only 120. What happened to the 380? They could not stay in the quarantine. You will come out. And, I mean, I encourage you to watch Pastor Clem's message of last Friday. Watch it. You will come out of this empowered in prayers. Full of the Holy Ghost. I have to stop it here because of time. I want you to rise up to your feet. I'm going to take some very quick prayer points. We're going to pray. You're going to come out better. <laughs> You're going to come out not beating about the bush. No fire brigade running around. No, 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 no. When you come out, the world will know that you have reinvented. The world will know that you were in the presence of the living God and you heard God with what you're doing. Lift up your hands. Noah and Lot went back to their old ways of drunkenness. Say, Father, do not let me go back to my old ways. In the name of Jesus, every sin that easily beset us will break it in Jesus' name. We are not going back to our old ways in the mighty name of Jesus. Lift up your hands. Psalm 23 says, Oh Lord, restore my soul. That's talking about emotional balance. No, I couldn't handle it. And they went into drinking. The daughters of Lord, they couldn't handle it. They went into all kinds of uh, 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 perverseness. Lift up your hands and say, Father, Father. 
I crave emotional balance. Restore my soul. In the name of Jesus. May the Lord restore your soul. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lift up your hand. Number three prayer point. You're going to say evil will not come out of this. Look at what happened to Noah. Look at how he came out and they started cursing his children because of what happened. Look at Lot, what happened. Stretch your hand. Say, after the quarantine, ah, evil will not come out of this. Evil will not affect your family. Evil will not happen in your ministry. Evil will not happen in your life. We decree it in the name of Jesus. Evil will not come out of this. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands towards heaven. Prayer point number four. Say my source of income will not dry up. If you have sources, say my sources. My sources of income will not dry up in this quarantine. My sources of income will not dry up in this quarantine. Say it like you believe it. Your sources of income will not dry up. I join my faith with you. Can I hear an amen? amen. Lift up your hand. Lot lost his wife. Because she looked back. Stretch your hands towards heaven. Exodus 12, 13 says that the blood shall be a mark upon your house. The Bible says in Exodus 12 and verse 23, hallelujah, that when I see the blood, I will not allow the, the, the destroyer to enter your house. Lift up your hand. Say in the name of Jesus, I take authority. Over the, over, the over the destroyer. I soak my life. Soak my life. The lives of every member of my family. I place the blood of Jesus. Upon my door post. Upon my window post. Upon my office. Wherever I go in this season. I put the mark of the blood of Jesus. And I declare and decree. No death in my family. Declare it in the name of Jesus. Now lift up your hands. We're going to pray for those that have lost their family members and friends. You may not know anybody, but the news is all over. Just lift up your hands. For the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we pray that you will comfort every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, every institution, every city that has lost people in this season. That COVID has killed. Lord, comfort them. We pray for the comfort of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands towards heaven. Say, Almighty God. Open my eyes. To know how to approach the future. Say, Almighty God. Open my eyes. Like you open the eyes. Of Apostle John. To know how to approach the future. May the Lord open your eyes. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands. This one I will pray it for you. I want to take authority. Over every fire brigade planning. Hogwash planning. Father we take authority. Over every rushed planning. Every plan, repulsive reactions in business, in jobs, in decisions, in choices. I bind it in the lives of the people right now. And I pray a sound mind upon you that you will operate as the Lord directs you. For the Bible tells us in John chapter 3 that they that are of the spirit, they are like the wind. You will blow like the wind and nobody can comprehend you. You will not operate like the people of the world. Lift up your heart. Next prayer point. Number, number nine prayer point. Say, Father, I will not be consumed by the present events. I will not be consumed by the gloom around me. Say, Father, give me the grace not to be consumed in the name of Jesus. And prayer point number 10, the last one. Lift up your hands. Say, Lord Jesus, you said to the apostles and to all your disciples to wait in the upper room, in the place of prayer, and the Holy Ghost fell. Lord, baptize me again by fire. Baptize me to pray. Baptize me to pray by fire. In the name of Jesus. It shall be as you have spoken. In the name of Jesus. Don't forget to share with your friends. Don't forget to let your friends know. Let me invite Pastor Clem. Please celebrate him once again. I am grateful for the privilege. 
Thank Hallelujah. Thank you, Amen. Pastor Marjorie. That was powerful. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory Appreciate Pastor Marjorie. May God anoint her more. Oh, Hallelujah. Amen. In this time of quarantine, uh, God is going to give you a strategy. Amen. God is going to give you grace. Yes, Lord. The days of quarantine shall not be wasted. Amen. In, you will come out stronger. Yes, Lord. Remember the word God gave us in January, I mean, uh, uh, December 31st, for the year, Psalm 66, verses 8 to 12, which says, Praise ye the Lord. Let the voice of his praise be heard, who keeps our soul in life, who suffered not our feet to be moved. He said, he brought us into the net, he laid affliction upon our loins, we went through the fire, we went through the uh, water, he said, but we are coming into a wealthy place. He brought us into a wealthy place. You are coming out with health with wealth you're coming out stronger amen hallelujah if you are there you say pastor i want to give my life to jesus christ i've not given my life to christ when you see all these things happening jesus said know that the end is near and your redemption is nigh you can get crushed if you give your life to christ today and jesus come to come tomorrow you're going Therefore, I want you to pray with me. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God, and God sent you to die for my sins, to save me, to set me free. Satan, I do not belong to you. I belong to Jesus from today. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Circumcise my heart. Make my spirit brand new. New creature. New creature. Father, write my name in the book of life. I will serve you henceforth in Jesus' mighty name. Father, based upon the confession of their mouth, I declare your sons and daughters born again. Blessed be your name forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. If you give your heart to Christ, please contact us, text us. Um, you see the church phone number on the screen. 0208-800-6001. If you're calling from outside, uh, England or United Kingdom, it is plus four four two zero eight eight hundred six zero zero one. Hallelujah. Right now, we're going into the anointing, the anointing session. Thank you, Father. So take your bottles, take your jars, your gallons of oil, and uh, we're going to send forth the power and the anointing of God when I speak. And God is going to preserve you. And God is going to set you on fire. And no demon will come near you. Nobody will invoke coronavirus against your life. No witch will prevail against you this period. Your mind will be clear. Amen. Every spirit of Jezebel assigned to attack your life. When you anoint yourself, that Jezebel has assigned against your life will be broken Amen. totally in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. You, Jesus. So before, as you take your anointing oils, I just want to give you a brief testimony. Some people are wondering, oh, why should we use anointing oil, you know, when we are not in a physical place? Uh, the Lord said, he sent his word and healed us. Praise God. Hallelujah. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God. As long as the vessel that is speaking is anointed, and speaking the word of God, the anointing will reach you where you are. Amen. I remember once upon a time, one of the church members, his wife was uh, giving birth in the hospital and had a breach. And the cord, umbilical cord, was tied around the neck of the baby. And uh, the doctor said the baby died. No heartbeat. And so in the middle of the night, he called Pastor Matri and I. And then we sent the word. We prayed. We sent the word to the hospital world. We began to pray. We prayed for over an hour. And after we finished, the Holy Spirit told us that baby is not dead. And uh, when we woke up, we got the good news. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And also, thank God, one of our medical team, 
was also in the hospital there, uh, Pastor Jerry. And uh, we give God praise. That was because the word was sent. Hallelujah. Amen. I remember once upon a time, I was we just a weekend, and the Lord spoke to me, cover all your members with the blood of Jesus. Yeah. So Pastor Marjorie and I began to cover everybody with the blood of Jesus, cover everybody with the blood of Jesus. And uh, about three or four hours, a member of the church called us. In fact, I sent a text yeah. to everyone. Yeah. A member of the church called us that, my son was just saved from a ghastly accident. accident. And everybody was saying, how did you escape? Praise God. Hallelujah. And then we have an, another testimony just not too long ago. About two weeks or three, two weeks ago. Two or three weeks ago. So the Lord spoke to me and said, the enemy wants to attack the young people in the church. Let's pray and cover all the children young people in the church with the blood of Jesus. So we sent a message all around. And uh, yesterday's prayer meeting, one of the sisters testified that her daughter went through the scourge, the plague, but God delivered her. Supernaturally, she didn't have to go to the hospital. Hallelujah. So we can pray from here and send the anointing to you. Glory to God. I also remember once upon a time, you know, that was when I was in Nigeria, myself and my friend, Pastor Tawo Dukoya, um, Pastor of Fountain of Life Church. So I went to his house. We were not pastors then. So I went to his house, and then he said, I'm not feeling very well. He, he, he went and brought Coca-Cola from the fridge, and then he brought bread, you know, from the bread bin, I said, what are you about to do? He said, let's take communion and destroy this attack. Hallelujah. So we broke the bread, we took the coke, and instantaneously, he received this healing. Praise God. Hallelujah. You see, there's also another test, a lot of testimonies. That one of our brothers, our deacons, everybody in his office was retrenched about three weeks ago, except two of them. This is a brother who is an architect, and then one other contractor. Only two of them. Every other person was laid off. Praise God. Hallelujah. He shared the testimony in our early morning prayers. Uh, was it two, two nights ago? Glory to God. And then one of our brothers, you know, who, who is in business, Pastor Marjorie gave a word, you know, this grace for COVID-19. And it immediately the word quickened in the spirit. And he took the phone and started making phone calls. That settled everything he had been looking for, the money he has been looking for, you know, to do that big business, to go into that level. Everything was settled for them, somebody to pay it off and all that. So we, we, we can send the word. The Bible says, that we shall lay hands on the sick. This sign shall follow everyone that believes. In the name of Jesus, we cast out demons. In my name, Jesus said. So, if every believer is to cast out demons, you are anointed. So, you are going to lay your hands upon your head. Right. You will take the uh, oil of anointing, just hold on a bit. Lay, uh, 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 I mean, if you are a family uh, member, uh, the spiritual head of the family will anoint everybody. And then you anoint yourself, you who anointed everybody. The Bible says, is there anyone sick? Is there anyone afflicted? Let him call for the pastors or the elders of the church. If he has committed any sins, the sins will be forgiven. He said, then the prayer of faith will heal him and save him. Praise God. James chapter 5. And so right now, because of time, I want... I want to pray over all the anointing oils, wherever you are, Nigeria, South Africa, Australia, uh, and so on and so forth. I saw people logging in from South Africa, Australia, Nigeria, other uh, nations of the world in Europe, uh, and the United Kingdom. I want to pray over your oil, using my oil as a point of contact. Pastor Marjorie should come forward now. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. Hold your anointing oil. 
Hold it with your hands. Your hands are anointed. Amen. You can touch it if you can. Father, I sanctify yes, Lord. this oil of the apothecary or pharmacy that the Lord commanded to be used from the day of the tabernacle to sanctify the holy things of the tabernacle and to sanctify the sons of Aaron and Aaron and Moses the priests so they could offer a sacrifice in holiness Amen. so yokes will be destroyed in their lives Jesus. at this time of coronavirus the yoke of coronavirus as we anoint ourselves today shall be destroyed Amen. heaviness shall be destroyed Amen. depression shall be destroyed Amen. suicidal ten tendencies shall be destroyed Amen. in the name of Jesus, you, Jesus Christ the son of the living God yes, father I set apart and sanctify this Thank oil you, jars just like the crews of oil of the widow woman was anointed by Elijah and it continued to multiply yes. and the anointing flowed in it just like the oil of the widow woman whose two sons were to be repossessed. Uh, he said, lock yourself in and pour out the oil and the oil continued to flow. Hallelujah. The anointing will flow upon your head day and night, Amen. upon your children wherever you go. Amen. And seal your spirit and soul against coronavirus. Thank you, Father. Yes, As we dedicate it to you in the name of the Father and sanctify yes, in the name of the Son, Amen. Jesus Christ, and the name Amen. of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now, quickly, um, dip your hands on the oil and begin to anoint your family. Amen. Anoint yourself. Thank you, Father. Put your hands on the oil and lay it upon them. Touch their heads. Hallelujah. Say, I anoint you Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ, or I anoint you in the name of the Father God, Jehovah. I anoint you in the name of Jesus Christ and his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's do that quickly. I anoint you, Pastor Marjorie, in Amen. the name of the Father Amen. God, Jehovah, in the name of his Son, Jesus Amen. Christ, Amen. and in the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We give you praise, we give you glory. I anoint myself in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. The yoke is destroyed. In Jesus' mighty name. So very quickly, let's take our offerings. If you're a member of the church, you have been blessed by Triumphant Church International. Please pay your tithes. We thank God for all those who have been honoring his God in their financial obligations. You know, we really thank God. We didn't expect, we thought when people go home, that would be the end, but thank God. Uh, we're so shocked, many of you who are actively pa participating and even giving more than you used to give. My God will supply your need Amen. according to his riches in glory. So take your offering, your tithe, your thanksgiving. Yesterday, um, the sister who said, daughter was delivered from COVID-19, she gave a thanksgiving offering. You know, you don't wait to come to church to give. Any time the Lord does something for you, thank him. You are not paying for it. He has done it free of charge. You are just appreciating God. Hallelujah. Even for keeping us alive up till now. Some of our colleagues are gone, our friends, some of them have gone. In fact, you see, during the coronavirus uh, situation, somebody came into our office. A contractor came into our office to work. On the 11th of March. On the 11th of March. And then sat with Pastor Madri talking. You know, sat with one of our staff talking. Our accountant. All day, All day working with that sister, with our accountant. And after I went to discuss with Pastor Madri, then when he was going, he came out and I came out to greet him and he wanted to shake my hand. I said, no, social distance. And so I just touched him on his elbow and uh, he left. So it was later I now found out, a week after that, 
he found that he had coronavirus. <laughs> so, he said, God will deliver you. He said, no plague, no calamity will come near your dwelling. So, let's give our seed, our offering. You can go, you can use PayPal. You can, uh, yes, PayPal on the website. You can pay through the website. You can pay directly uh, online banking to Barclays Bank Triumphant Church account. Uh, the short code is 208302-208302, and the account number is 700-165. Account number is 700-165, and the short code is 208302-208302. Um, if you also feel like uh, paying uh, through card transaction, uh, you can call the church office and um, the uh, accountants will call you and take your uh, bank details and transact your offering. Praise God. That is paying by card. Hallelujah. So I'll give you one minute to get your offerings and your seed ready. The account number is on the screen. Our time is almost gone. We'll be true very soon. The account number is on the screen. Sort code 208302. Account number 700-165. If you are in the branches, pay to your branch. Pay to your branch account. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the seed, for the offering, thanksgiving. We thank you, mighty God, for normal offering that we give. And those of us who need to pay our tithes, we give you glory. I sanctify the seed. I sanctify the offerings, thanksgiving. Mighty Father, rebuke every devourer. Coronavirus is a big devourer that is facing us. It's not gone. But you said you will rebuke every devourer when we pay our tithes. We give you glory, we give you honor. Rebuke it, oh God. Rebuke coronavirus. It will not take us out. It will not devour us. We are not going to visit the cemetery for anybody. Any member of our families, our friends, our siblings, our children. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Rejoice over your offering. Uh, let's just have uh, the praise, uh, the one Dimitri did, and let's quickly. <laughs> Hallelujah, 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 hallel
Amen. I'm enjoying the music. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not go finish for our mouth. We shall not die, we shall live to declare the works of God. Amen. Um, so, um, the online services continue. Uh, while we are at home, it's going to be YouTube and Facebook alone because um, uh, we are not uh, transmitting from the church. Uh, the broadband at home is not able to carry the three. Um, so, when we get back to church, we'll be transmitting from the website. That's why we've been having problems with the uh, Facebook uh, live stream. So, um, early morning prayers continue. These prayers are so anointed and so powerful. It sets the pace for the day. By the time you join these prayers, you'll not be weak. You'll not be confused in the day. Your day will be useful. So, join us. If you don't have the link, uh, we will send it to you. We have sent it to all the members. Some of you have not woken up to join us. Try and join us. Uh, 6.30 every day. Start, we we'll start logging in from 6 o'clock, 6.15. We play praise and worship. And then we start 6.30 to 7.30. If you are going to work, you can join us. And then uh, maybe by 7, you go at least do the prayers together we need corporate anointing at this hour don't allow the enemy to isolate you because when you are together this the corporate anointing is more powerful than when you are alone this is the time to join faith and our forces together so i implore you to join this morning prayer the wednesday bible studies uh, eight o'clock as usual and the friday uh, push so please uh, let's be in an atmosphere of worship. Invite your friends, your families to watch wherever they are in the world. So the evangelism now is online. So don't just, if you are not online, if you are not on Facebook, you see, you'll be cheating yourself. Because this is the way to evangelize right now. Praise God. So as much as, as, as possible. You know, use the Facebook, share it on your Facebook. Your family members will hear this word. Your friends will hear it. This is not a time to be ashamed. Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. This is now the modern day evangelism online. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, in the absence of any other announcement, Pastor Matthew, is there any other announcement? Okay. Uh, let us rise up and share the grace in fellowship. Yes, yes Pastor Marjorie has something okay. My apologies. Children's service by 5 p.m. on Zoom and the youth service by 7 p.m. by Zoom. So please connect. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Encourage your children to connect. Amen. Cover them in the blood and the Amen. anointing. Amen. Lift up your hands and let us say the grace in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. And say to somebody, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life, and you will dwell in the house of God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless and keep you. Amen. Make his face shine upon you. Amen. May the Lord be gracious upon you. Amen. And the Lord lift his countenance upon you Amen. and give you peace this week. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Man's search for fulfillment is beyond ordinary human efforts. 
at Triumphant Church International. The eyes of your understanding become open to the link between your dreams, earthly realities, and achievements. Our mission is to restore you to your full potential in Christ and inculcate a lifestyle of prayer, outreach, and intimate relationship with God. Triumphant Church International has her headquarters at Tottenham in London, with branches in England and Africa. At Triumphant Church International, you experience God's anointing, strong pastoral care, revelatory biblical teachings, unconditional love from the pastoral team and all members. Senior Pastors Clem and Marjorie Asomawe, Trustees, Ministerial Team, Leaders, Workers, and Entire Membership welcome you to Triumphant Church International. We are excited about your fellowship, which is a tremendous blessing to us, and we know you shall definitely be blessed and fired up as you fellowship with us at Triumphant Church International. Your breakthrough is our joy.